What are the big three essentials your spiritual journey can't flourish without? We've been in this series the last couple weeks, and uh, we're, well, we're glad you're here. Good morning. I'm Pastor Yancey Valdez. Welcome to Columbia Life Church. It is the weekly gathering where together uh, we create a sacred space where God can be present, breathe life, and bring renewal into people's lives through faith, hope, and love in Jesus Christ. And this morning, uh, I just really just so excited about what God wants to do today. Really, I want to do it this morning. I want to address the question, what are the big three essentials your spiritual journey can't flourish without? And when we think about flourishing, I'm talking about this. To flourish means to come alive. It literally means to come alive, to come out from under what has been overwhelming you, to come out from what you, what, uh, what you feel you've, uh, when you ever felt you felt been buried alive. To flourish is to literally break ground from the ground under. To start as a seed that's taking root and literally breaking forth and drawing life from the sun. And we're talking about the Son of God. And we're talking about what it takes to flourish, flourish um, in, in these heavy times we live in. Because literally the problem here is, is, that, is that when you're under heavy load, when you're under heavy load, when life is heavy, it's much harder to get what God has for you. When you're feeling overwhelmed, it's, it's much harder to receive what God has for you. And literally what God has for us is life. God has for us life. Especially when times are going sideways. When life is going sideways, um, God gives us life. The good news is that with God, no matter what you're going through, God can change every single circumstance we'd ever go through life. Sometimes the circumstances don't change, but when we're with God, God changes us. And when, we go, when we've been going through this series of the three, the three big essentials that our spiritual journey can't flourish without, we've been using the metaphor of like having a backpack. And, you know, when that backpack is heavy, when life is heavy, two things either got to happen. Either that backpack has to get lighter or we got to get stronger. One or, one, or, one or two of those ways, and I'm not going to put God in a box, but I know that in life's journey, God has either in my life made that backpack lighter or he's made me stronger. And I believe that there's something in here that God has for each and every one of us. And I'm believing at the end of this message, something's going to happen in our lives, that we're going to be better to face the week at the end of this message than we are right now. Because we're going to spend time with God. We're going to spend some time in his word and allow him to feed our spirit today. The size of the tractor tire inner tube was pretty humongous for a six-year-old kid. I was trying to get this bulky and somewhat heavy inner tube into the pool I was swimming in. I was with my cousins and my friends. And it was a bit challenging for a kid my size. I wasn't that big. I could barely lift it off the ground. I, if, if you can imagine me as a six-year-old, I mean, the, the inner tube was taller than me. Uh, but I wanted to get it in the pool. And I remember uh, once my, came, my cousin came over to help me, we were able to lift it. Of course, it was much lighter because my cousin was helping me to lift the inner tube to the pool. But then as we got to the steps of the shallow end, he decided he wanted to leave me, and so he jumped into the pool cannonball style and got it, left me with the inner tube uh, to go in. And so as I was getting into the pool, I re re noticed that I stepped into the first step. I stepped in the first step, and guess what happened? The inner tube got higher. I got shorter, and the inner tube got higher. The weight really didn't feel changed yet. But as I, I learned that as I was getting a little bit deeper into the water with each step, and even though it was getting more bulkier, and pretty soon, once I was in the water with only my head above it, it, it was lighter than a feather. The weight, the weight changed as I was going deeper into that pool. And I really share that to, to share this point here is that when our faith in God deepens, our load becomes lighter, even though the weight of our load may not change. I'm going to say it again. When our faith in God deepens, our load becomes lighter, even though the weight of our load may not have changed. Why? Because when we put our faith in God, all things are possible. When we put our faith in God, all things become possible. Sometimes we have a hard time seeing it because we're caught in a certain frame of mind or a certain uh, way of thinking which causes us to feel a certain way. And so it doesn't matter, uh, you know, what's coming our way. It's like if we have a bad processor Good or bad can come our way. We just know, we just already have a preconceived idea of where something's headed. Does that make sense? It's like if I constantly harbor or have this kind of um, frame of mind or conviction that, that my circumstances are set in stone, that nothing's ever going to change. If I live with that conviction in my thought that nothing's ever going to change in my life, it will take a miracle for that thought process to change. Literally. 
This has been in my experience. If something bad is, is, is destined to happen, it will happen. And that, I mean, that, that can be a conviction that can be detrimental to anything God wants to do. And so literally, it, when my thinking is, is so harbored and so rooted in the fact that I believe that my circumstances are so negative that I already know where my life is headed, it would become an absolute miracle of God to change that thinking. And I meet people like that all the time. It's like, they're, they're, this, is, this is all I know. This is where I came from. Therefore, my life is going to be like this. I grew up this way. You don't know my past. You don't know where I've come from. And as a result of where I've come from, I already know this is where my life is headed. It's going to hell in a hazmasket just the way it is. It's what I was made to do. It was what I was destined for. Look at my life. Look at the way things happen to me. I know my life is going this way. But here's the miracle of God. When God steps in and, and God literally comes in in a miraculous way, it's, it's huge when he can change and give you a brand new mind. And it's like, it's like, whoa, you mean to tell me that God can completely change my destiny? The good news is he can. He can. He really can. You don't understand. I've been carrying this inner tube all my life. And it's heavy for a six-year-old kid. Just step into the water and see how that changes. Step in the water and see how that changes. Let me carry it. Let me carry what's been so heavy in your life. Go a little bit deeper. The wonderful thing is that even if you don't know how to swim, part of the journey is learning how to swim. Part of, part of the journey is learning how to go underneath that water. Take a breath and watch what God can do. It's a wonderful thing when God can step in and just do a complete miracle in our lives that changes that way of thinking. All of a sudden, you're like a kid again. It's so wonderful when 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 small kids, brand new babies, and they're, 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 they're developing things, and it's like they, they just have a tremendous curiosity about life, like a sponge. And you ever notice, you might not notice because you were probably a baby, but I wish your parents noticed that when, when you were growing up, you were growing, you probably had a tendency, if you saw stairs, you just wanted to go climb them. It was just a natural thing. I want to go, I just want to, I just want to climb. I want to go higher. What happened to, to those things when we became adults? We get scared of heights. We get scared of things. We get scared to try new things. It's like a curiosity. We, we lose the sense of wonder in our walk with God. Boy, if the church could just reclaim its sense of wonder again and just say, you know what? What does God want to do? What does God want to do? Can God really change a leopard's spots? <laughs> or is this who I all, am I always going to be? This is a wonderful thing. With God, anything is possible. Literally, faith boils down to what you believe about God and what you believe he is capable of doing in and through your life. That's what faith boils down to. What do you believe about God? Tell me, tell me about the God you serve and I will show you your faith. What kind of God do you really serve? Tell me about your God and I will, I will understand who, what, where your faith is at. Tell me about your God. And that's what it boils down to is what you believe about God and what you believe he is capable of doing in you and through your life. Now, Pastor Jill really, really encapsulated a point of view that I think is really critical for all of us is that, is that none of us, we're all on a spiritual journey. Yep. We're all broken to some degree. No one came from the perfect family. We, we all have things that we've, we've carried in since our childhood. I mean, we, we all got stuff. Let me put it that way. And, and we, all, we all, you know, put on our pants the same way. We're all, we're all human beings created in the image of God. And the wonderful thing is that, you know, when, when no matter where we come from and, and no matter where we're at in life, that when God steps into our lives, something will change. Something will, something will always change. When we're thinking about, about what God can do in us and through us, I come up here and I'm thinking about God and to be honest with you, it's, it's being able to be honest and vulnerable before God and honest my, with myself about my own faults, my own shortcomings, my own places where I've blew, blown it in my past. And I come up here, what makes you qualified to, to just bring a message? What makes you qualified to share about me? You're not worthy. You, you, the world doesn't know all the, all the dumb things you've done, all the bad things and the bad decisions you made. And I said, but that, that's, that's the thing though. My shortcomings is the reason why J Jesus died for me. <laughs> yes. 
My shortcomings is the reason Jesus died for me. That is the essence of the gospel. I'm not here because I'm qualified. I'm here because he's qualified. He is completely qualified to forgive me of my sins. He is completely qualified to deal with the mess-ups I've made in my life, the collateral damage, the, the, the stupid stuff I've done in my journey. That's exactly why. You know what, devil, you're right. You're right, I'm not qualified. But that's why he died for me. And in essence, that is the gospel. <laughs> that is the message. You're right. I'm not here because I've done everything right. I'm far from it. But my faith tells me that you died for me to pay the price for my sins. And my faith tells me that I can believe in God and that he's capable of forgiving my sins. The Bible says in 1 John uh, 7, if we confess our sins, or 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He's, he's totally uh, capable of forgiving me of all of my sins and putting me back into a re right relationship with God through Christ. A right relationship with God. The Bible tells us that, that, that faith is the substance. It is, it, is this, it is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things uh, that are not seen. Hebrews 11. It tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please God. When I'm thinking about uh, faith as being the substance of things hoped for, it is, it is the belief in the action of things hoped for. It is the belief in the action of something. If I really believe it, I will act upon it. If I really believe it, the dopamine in my brain will, 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 will come upon me and, and it'll bring me to activation of that faith. Literally, it's, it's, it's the faith and belief, the faith and the belief of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. And without faith, the Bible tells us it is impossible to please God. So when, when your faith is low or shallow, everything can seem much more difficult or heavy to carry. Because I'm not in the deep end, I'm in the shallow end. When my faith is shallow, things are so much heavier in life. When there's, when there, it's just, it's just I, I'll tell you what, things are a lot heavier if I only go to church on Christmas and Easter. Yeah. It's really the truth. It's not the candy-coated version. But it's true. But when I'm, when I'm connecting with people and, and, uh, or connecting with God and I'm, um, my faith is growing in community, things can become so much better. And, and believe me, I, I'm, 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 I'm only testifying of, of the good things. I mean, when I, when I get here, when, I, when I'm sharing this stuff with you, you know, I'm, I'm coming before you on Sunday. Some of my prayers when I'm preparing my message, I'm like, God, what do you want to do through me as I'm, as, what do you want to do through, through me? This, this broken vessel, this person that's messed up so many times, what do you want to do through me as I depend upon you just as I am? <laughs> just as I am. And I know how I am, just as I am. I'm far from perfect. It's God. It has to be God. That's the only place we can find that, 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 that source of strength, is in Him. And when our faith is low, everything can seem so much heavier. The weight of life's burdens become heavier. The distance between where you're at and where, uh, where you really want to be in life can, can be too great and too impossible to achieve. Lord, this is where I'm at. I know you've called me to be here. It's only by faith that I will ever get there. It's only by you working in my life. It's only by, by partnering with the God in whom all things are, po are, are, are possible that, it, that I can ever get from where I'm at to where I believe you're calling me to be. That place where I can come alive and live in a place of glorious wonder and curiosity again. It's only in you. It's only you. Sometimes it can be like getting your, your foot caught in a bear trap, a trap that is continually biting into your, into your flesh and inflicting pain and limiting your ability You've come to the conclusion that, I, uh, that I'm, I'm, I, I can't get anywhere without him. When I'm without, when I'm with, without faith, I'm just, my faith is shallow. I can't go anywhere. When my faith is shallow, it can get even worse because I can't escape the limitations of, of my own thinking. I can't even escape the limitations of what others think about me. It's like reinforcing the world without my faith. It's like the devil is telling me, you're no good. I, other people will say, you're right, you are no good. And it just keeps, seems to be a, a rolling a rolling continuation of things that are just not good in my life. What do I do to escape that place? Because you know what? When I start thinking about that, I start meditating and thinking about, about the worry in my life, the anxiousness in my life, the places where I've messed up, the places about I don't even want to face tomorrow. I mean, I start getting, believe it's true, that when I begin thinking about this thing, I begin feeling not so good. <laughs> Negative feelings, and, and it's like, man, Negative thinking, negative feelings. You know what? 
And, 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 and as a result, life is going to go this way. And, and honestly, if that's you, God doesn't want your life going in a negative direction. God loves you so much that he wants you to know today, it doesn't matter where you're at today, that with him all things are possible. It's easy to get weighed down by discouragement, especially in the judgmental world we live in at times. You ever encounter judgmental people? Judgy people. I mean, I'm one of them. You guys don't get me wrong. I I can do that too. I could easily move into that. But I know it's not the kind of person God wants me to be. God wants me, God wants me to recognize the grace he has given to me in my life so I can, I can give away grace in the lives of others and display who he is. Now, while at one time our, our, when our faith is low or, or shallow, everything can be, set, can be heavy. On the other hand, when your faith in God is deep and wide, let me say that again, when your faith in God is deep and wide, all things are possible. That's when all things become possible when it's deep and it's wide. It's our faith in God that enables us to tap into his strength and wisdom, his presence and power. It provides a life-giving and overcoming dynamic for almost every situation we would ever encounter. Think about that. For almost every situation you would ever encounter, your faith in God has the power to impact that. I mean, every area of your life, every, every, every aspect of our being, he can come in. God has the potential when it's deep and when it's wide. I'm, I'm going to say this again because it, it, there's, there's, I'm throwing you a pass today, so you need to catch this. When your faith is deep and wide, just about every situation in your life, I'm going to say every circumstance in your life can be impacted by a God in whom all things are possible. It's like you always have a resource when life you get, you get hit in the gut or, or the wind gets knocked out of you. You know what? My first aid kit, I'm first, I'm going to cry out to God. I know where to go when life goes sideways. How many of you know where to go when life goes sideways? You know. You know without a doubt. Life has gone bad. Life has gone to hell and hands bad. Do you know where you're supposed to go? Do you know where you need to go? Where's your first aid kit? What's in your first aid kit when life goes sideways? This is critical. This is critical for living, uh, uh, for your life to flourish in bad circumstances. This is critical for not getting crushed by the things that are, that are overwhelming you, by the things that are just uh, causing you to feel like you're being buried six feet under. This is the stuff that helps us to resurrect, uh, to, to experience resurrection in an otherwise overwhelmed world. Do you know where to go? This is, this is what faith is like. This is what faith enables us to do. Our faith in Christ has the potential to release in us so much more than we could ever think or imagine that Jesus' followers wanted more of it. Luke chapter 17, verses 5 to 6. The apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. Now, I didn't say that right because there's an exclamation point. Increase our faith. The apostles went to the Lord and said, increase our faith. When's the last time you asked the Lord to increase your faith? You're in the middle of an excruciating life circumstance. But this I know. I've gone to the first aid kit and that with my God in this circumstance, anything's possible. God, increase my faith. It's heavy right now. I'm frustrated. I'm anxious. I'm worried, Lord. Increase my faith. Increase my faith. Deepen my faith. Make it deep and wide so that I, I either get stronger or the load becomes lighter so that you may be glorified. He says, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea and it would obey you. Think about that. Jesus didn't hesitate. When they asked that prayer, Jesus didn't hesitate with giving them a response to their request. God, in fact, God takes great delight in seeing people's faith deepen and grow stronger. Think about that. God would delight in in seeing your faith increase and grow stronger. You know, if you were to ask him to increase your faith, God will respond. I truly believe that. I truly believe that. Jesus told them that to increase their faith, to add muscle to their faith, they they didn't need a whole lot to start with, and he used a mustard seed to illustrate his point. As one of the smallest of all seeds, the mustard seed would have been a seed that the, that the disciples were familiar with. They would have understood its power and capacity to grow. 
overtake and cover an entire hillside with beautiful and blossoming flowers. That's, that's the power of a small mustard seed, what it can do after it's taken root and, and broken through the ground, experience breakthrough. Jesus also told them that this kind of faith, that with this kind of faith, they can speak to a deeply rooted mulberry tree to be uprooted and planted into the sea, and it would obey them. What? What? Now, part of the natural landscape where Jesus would have ministered in the, in the Holy Land, the mulberry tree would have also been a tree that the disciples were familiar with. They would have known its root system can run, run pretty deep and long beyond the extended branches itself. It is a pretty uh, complicated root system. It has one of those things. The deeply rooted mulberry tree stood as a symbol, you know, to the mind's eye, when they were walking in the Holy Land, for the disciples, the mulberry tree also would have stood as a symbol of victory for Israel. It was how God made himself known, for, uh, known and brought about a victory for Jesus' ancestor, King David, when he led his forces into battle against the Philistines some 1,000 years earlier. The Bible tells us in um, 2 Samuel 5, 23 to 25, it says that, therefore, David inquired of the Lord. You understand the Philistines were there. They're getting ready to battle. And David inquired of the Lord, and he said, You shall not go up, circle around behind them, and come upon them in front of the mulberry trees. Mulberry trees. And it shall be when you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the mulberry trees, then you shall advance quickly. For then the Lord will go out before you to strike the camp of the Philistines. And David did so as the Lord commanded him, and he drove back the Philistines from Geba as far as Gezer. So here's David. He's overwhelmed, and he is just um, infused with a sense of just uh, the, this burden for him and his people because the enemy was attacking the Philistines. And so what did he do? What was David's first aid kit? I've got, life is going sideways right now. I'm getting in place with the Philistines. He goes, and what does he do? He inquires of the Lord. Lord, I don't know what's the best thing, the best way to counter this. I don't know what, what would be my, the best decision, the way going forward to thwart the attack of the Philistines. What should I do? It's a, it's a great thing that in, being in the middle of a circumstance, we know what to do, that we go and ask the Lord. What do you want to do? It's such a simple thing. I, I, you know, this is one thing I need to do. I need to always understand that when there's a circumstance I need to face or a decision I need to make in the middle of a bad circumstance that I have to believe the Lord has the best advice. I have to believe that the Lord has the best advice. So I need to, to build that habit into my life that I need to inquire of the Lord. This is what David did. He went to inquire of the Lord. And it tells us that the Lord told him, gave him a specific battle plan, a specific battle plan to um, overtake the Philistines. And the key was here... After David got God's answer, here's the key. Here's where faith was inactive. David did. Everybody say, David did. David did, David did as the Lord commanded him. He did. He, just, he didn't go to God and ask for, advice, ask for his advice and then decide whether he was going to do it. He literally went with the intention, just tell me what to do and I will do it. And there's a difference. Because God's not our advisor. He's not our counselor. He's Lord of all. He's our king. And he issues commands. And when we, when we understand it was God's will, uh, it's God's will that, that this is God's will, that this changes my life. When I come with the disposition of, of saying, man, this is God changing my life right now. When I believe, I'm going to become changed. And as I, as I walk in that transformation, the circumstances around me are going to be changed. They're going to be transformed because the word is already transforming me. As I believe, that's my faith. As I believe, he's already changing me. Once I start believing what God is telling me to do, something's changing. The load is either getting lighter or I'm getting stronger. Or I'm going deeper and something's getting lighter. Something's changing. The atmosphere is changing around me because when I'm out in the air, out of, out of water, that load, is, that load is heavy. But when I start getting into the water, when my faith starts deepening, something's changing. My atmosphere is changing. Something is changing. I have to believe that every time I go to the word of God, something's going to be transformed. Something in some aspect of my being. I believe that after, when I go to the word of God, before I walk away, some part of my being is going to be transformed. The Bible tells us that David did. David did. It was a great day of victory. 
And the mulberry tree in the story serves as a reminder that in all circumstances, all circumstances, that God gives the victory. God gives the victory. It doesn't matter what people think you're capable of doing or becoming. If you really believe nothing is too difficult for God, then with God, nothing will be impossible for you. I'm going to say that again. If you really believe nothing is too difficult with God, then with God, nothing will be impossible for you. Even when you're in a place when you feel overwhelmed, engulfed by the sea, and feeling the fury of raging waters, a place where most people may think victory is impossible, the Word tells me that victory still belongs to the Lord. The Word tells me that vic the ultimate one who decides victory will be the Lord. It will be Him. If you don't want to be crushed by the things you're carrying right now, you need to make it a habit to deepen your faith daily by regularly spending time in God's Word. It's important. I have to believe that every time, if I can just touch the hem of His garment, I believe I'm going to be made well. If I can just get in the presence of God, I have to believe that, that maybe God's going to touch my mind or my body or my spirit or God's going to begin to set a miracle in motion because I'm going to go deeper. And as I'm going deeper, something's going to become lighter. I'm either going to get stronger or the atmosphere is going to change. Something's going to change when I'm going after God. I have to believe it. It changes when I come to church. It changes when I, when I start worshiping with my church family and I, and I start spending time with the Lord with you. Because I believe God is in this place right now. I believe right now. We, we are in the middle of, some, of a place where, where people that turn it, tune in right now. God is present. God can breathe life. And God can bring renewal into someone's life. God could save a marriage today. God could touch a family member today. God could touch a person's life. And, and tomorrow morning when they go to work, they, could, they have the potential to, to bless their workplace. Those who work there. Customers, clients, going to school tomorrow or when school starts, going back to school. Teachers, students, I mean, it, 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 it all, uh, my faith tells me that this is, this is where this all could happen. To spend time in God's word. The Bible says that faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. Romans 10, 17. Faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. Muscle comes when we hear the word of God. Muscle in our faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. It's what produced all of the greatest heroes in the Bible. Heroes of the faith who found victory through God because they all shared one thing in common. They heard the word of the Lord and they believed what they heard. I'm going to say it again. They shared all things in common. These greats of faith. They heard the word of the Lord. They, they heard the word of the Lord. But it didn't stop there. They believed what they heard. They believed the one in whom the word was coming from. They believed that the one that was speaking was the God in whom all things are possible. They all shared one thing in common. They shared this, this champion's habit, which was to hear. They spent time where they could hear the word of the Lord and then the habit of believing what they heard, of believing where it was coming from, of believing that when, the, when, when their God was speaking, God was taking an inspired breath and he was breathing life into them. They weren't just hearing the word, they were breathing in the word. And as a result, they were able to take a deep breath and go deeper into the places where we wouldn't normally may live. How, how does a person that, that survives in oxygen live underwater? We only continue to live when we take a deep breath and we believe God's going to bring us out on the other side. They believe what they heard. These are what the champions of faith heard. They heard the word of the Lord and they believe what they heard. This is how you add muscle to your faith. This is how faith is produced when you hear God's word and you believe what you've heard and it grows even stronger as it, as it calls you to act on, act on what you believe what you heard. I mean, it's, 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 it's believing and it's acting it out. It's, it's doing that key word where it says David did. David did what the Lord commanded him. David did. Everybody say David did. David, oh, you got to say it strongly with an exclamation point. David did. David did. It's huge. And so I want to encourage you today. Let the word, let, let his word breathe life into your being each day. Let the word breathe life into your being each day. Let his word guide your life. And I promise you, his word won't fail you. His word won't fail you. God always, God always, um, how do I put this? God always wants to give you a verse or a scripture passage each and every day to uphold you, 
to strengthen you and to sustain you every single day. Every single day. Don't miss what God has for you every single day of the week. As his word, think about this, as his word takes up residence in our, in our heart, so does his presence. As, as his word takes up residence in his heart, so does, so does his present, presence. It causes our faith in Christ to rise with new possibilities, to rise with strength to rise with courage, to rise with action. It's the kind of faith that literally transforms, has the potential to transform your life and my life. It has the, the potential to transform a person's life, our lives, when the word takes up residence. His presence means you won't be crushed by the burdens you're carrying right now because as you deepen your faith in him, his presence will cause your burdens to feel more and more like that inner tube did for me when I was going deeper into the water. Without a deepening faith in God, you'll have a much harder time rising above the limitations you've placed on yourself, maybe the, perhaps the limitations of others have placed on you. And it, whatever you might be able to accomplish and become without a deepening faith in God will always be only a fraction of what could have been with God. There's a lot of people that have done a lot of great things in life without God, but I'm going to tell you, I truly believe it's only a fraction of what could be if they were with God. So here's a simple tip. Deepen your faith in God by spending time with him in his word and in prayer and being ready to respond to his leading. Deepen your faith in God, spending time with him each and every single day. Spend time with him in his word and in prayer. And be ready. Be ready. That's the key. Be ready. Be ready to respond to his leading. You're going to add muscle to your faith when you do this. You're going to add muscle to your faith. Your faith was meant to give you life. Your faith was meant to give, cause your life to flourish. The word of the Lord says that the just will live by faith. Those who, who live in a right relationship with God will live by faith. You were meant to come alive through your faith. I'm going to say that again. You were meant to come alive through your faith. You were meant as, as a mustard seed to break through the ground and come alive through faith. It's going to change you. You're going to rise above the limitations of what people say you can or cannot do because you're going to be walking with the Lord in whom God all things are possible. Amen? Amen. I want to pray for you today. Let's bow our heads today. Father, I just want to give you praise and glory and honor today. Um, I thank you for being a God who's very concerned, who, who very much loves, uh, loves us. You love the sinner. You love people. You love, can't even, it's amazing love. Because there's such a variety of, of people and backgrounds that are even present here right now and, and perhaps even watching uh, online today. We, we, come, we have so much diversity when it comes to our, our past experiences. Hurts, pains, good, bad, the ugly. But Father, you, you understand where we all come from. You understand uh, life's, life's struggles life's heavy burdens. You understand those things. And so, Lord, you entered into humanity through your son, Jesus Christ, to give us hope, to instill in us a new belief, a new faith in you, that with you all things are possible. I pray today, Lord, for those that in this moment, they, they recognize the, the overwhelming burden they may be carrying in their life right now. It may be um, things going on at home, things going on at work, life in general. We may, may even be concerned about uh, in the shape of our country right now. Things happening in the world. Um, the news has its own take on, on, on reality, Lord. And so I, I pray in this moment for those that are carrying heavy burdens, Lord, that you would add muscle. You would begin a process right now. You would set a miracle in motion, a beginning even right now, Lord God, to add muscle to our faith. That you would give us the grace to be able to come to you just as we are even right now and say, God, increase my faith. Give me the grace, Lord, to approach you. Give me the grace to believe, Lord God, that you are a loving, accepting God, that this is your desire for me and for my brother and sister right now. Give us the grace to believe that is it your desire to take one step closer to you, that you may increase our faith, that you may add faith, Lord, that as you give us the grace to deepen our faith, the load will become lighter. In Jesus' name, that either the load will become lighter or we will get stronger. Maybe you're here today, you say, I am carrying a load in my life. And you would say, God, I need you to increase my faith. I'm asking today, Lord. 
I don't, I don't want to leave without you doing something in my life, Lord, to begin a continual process to increase my faith in you. Lord, I want, I want to believe more and more that you are a God in whom all things are possible. Lord, I want when I encounter a situation in which it feels like I got hit in my gut that I, I want the grace to be able to, uh, to have as my first response the idea of turning to you. Not to get angry, not to get confused, not to forget about you, but in that instance, give me the grace to, to let my initial response to be to turn to you. To be able to turn to you in the, in the confusion. To be able to turn to you in the darkness. To be able to turn to you when the, when the pain or the hurt first comes on. Whether it's physical pain or emotional pain or mental pain or, or whatever that, that, that initial thing that, that disrupts my life, Lord, that you'd give me the grace to initially turn to you and believe that I'm not alone. The God would speak to you even right now that you're not alone. He's here. The God who, who makes... Who, who, who can make everything possible is here. Lord, give us the grace for that right now. You say, Pastor, that's me. I'm asking the Lord to increase my, my faith today. Just lift your heart. Lift your hand to him right now. You say, God, that's me. Lord, I want to increase. I want you to increase my faith. Increase my faith. Make my faith deeper and wider, Lord. I want to believe you for even greater things, Lord. And you have to believe that as you do that God's going to give you more than you know. God's going to give you so much faith that it's going to overflow that you're going to be able to be a source of faith for others. You're going to be able to point people to the God who gives you strength. As you begin walking and, 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 and walking in a newness and a new wonder and a strength that does not come from you but in a strength that comes from God, people are going to ask you, where does your source of strength come from? And you're going to be able to tell them, my source of strength is in the Lord, is in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's the one who's the wellspring of my joy, the wellspring of my supply, the wellspring of my life. You see, the strength's not going to just be for you. He's, he's going to give you so much strength that you're going to be able to be a source of strength for others, to be able to point people to the God whom you serve today. May his grace come upon you for what you have to lift today, for what you're carrying today. And may he give you more strength that as you encounter people who just need a touch, May his grace come to you and be in you and flow through you in the name of Jesus. You say, God, that's me today. May your grace rest upon me. Lord, I pray for those that are saying that prayer today. May your grace come upon them in the name of Jesus, Lord. For whatever they may be carrying today, may the windows of heaven be open today for grace to rest upon this people today in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Maybe you're here today, you've, you've never met the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Or maybe you believe you, you love to enter this place of faith, but you just don't know him. Well, today, we're gonna, we're gonna say that prayer as a way um, to receive Jesus today because I, I'm gonna say this prayer a little bit differently today, so I want you to just take a moment to hear me. Look up to, look up to me today. You can come up, you're listening online. I wanna say a different kind of prayer today because some of you, I believe, at, at times, you fight this. You fight what I may fight daily when you, when you, when you hear the devil saying, you're no good. <laughs> You're not good enough to become a child of God. And you know, I want to encourage you today. I want to give you a, a spiritual weapon. If I had my pocket knife, I'd pull it out right now and say, here's a, here's a new spiritual weapon for you. Whenever you hear the devil tell you that you're not good enough, just tell him two words. You're right. You're right. But then remember this. That's why he died for me. You're right. That's why he died for me. And I'm different because of him. I'm different because of him. And so we're just going to say this prayer today just as a way to not only affirm our faith, but for maybe for those of you that um, uh, have never made a decision for Christ, you, you can say this prayer as, for this prayer as well. So let's, let's do this both. It's going to serve two purposes. I want to add muscle. I, wanna, I think the Lord wants to add muscle to our faith, but at the same time, I believe God wants to birth new life into someone today. So can we just say this prayer together? Repeat it with me. Dear Jesus, Over the course of my life, I've blown it many times. And I'm sorry. I'm asking you to forgive me. The devil has attacked me many times to say I'm not good enough. Give me the grace today to say you're right. And that's why you died for me. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. I believe it paid the price for my sins. 
I also believe that you were resurrected. That I may live a brand new life. Thank you, Lord. Today I open my heart to you. And ask that you would come into my heart. Send your spirit into my heart. That I may live a brand new life. A life that pleases you. In Jesus' name. Father, I pray for all of us that have said that prayer this morning. For those that said that prayer for the first time, Lord, I pray that a new life would take root today and that strength would be added into their lives. A brand new day of faith, a brand new day of relationship walking with you. And for those that have been on this pilgrimage for a long time, Lord, I also pray that that strength, muscle would be added for your disciples today, Lord. For those that have been on this journey with you, Lord, they have struggled at times and they have carried heavy burdens. But I pray today as they deepen, as their faith would become more deepened and widened today, they would feel the load become lighter and they would also feel the muscle being added to their faith, Lord. May lives be changed as a result of what you've done today, Lord. I pray that in the name of Jesus. I pray we would go out with the spirit of victory, Lord, believing that victory rests with you regardless of the circumstances we may be facing today. Help us to walk in that victory as your word, as your presence takes up residence in our lives. Help us to know that we're not walking this journey alone, but that your strength is in us and working through us, that your name and your presence may be glorified in our lives today, Lord. We give you all the praise and glory. Thank you for today, Lord. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, amen.